Good morning, everybody. My name is Pete Euchre. I'm from Chalet Village Firewise Community up in Gatlinburg. And this is my version of why Firewise is important. Uh, Firewise is important especially to me. We have lost our home in 2016 during the wildfire. So my wife and I went through a whole rebuilding pro process of uh, getting our house put back together. And while sitting in a hotel in Pitch and Forge right after the fire, I kind of learned about Firewise. If I knew about Firewise before the fire, I probably would have been a little bit smarter. So why is Firewise important? Fires of Wise is important mainly because it saves lives. We see that every time something happens, the Hatcher Mountain fire just a few days or a few weeks ago, actually there were lives that were saved because of the things we learned in 2016. And people have known about Firewise up in that region. Fires Wise is important because it also saves property. Saving property Believe me, having to rebuild is no fun, even if the insurance you have is a good insurance. It never covers everything, and it surely doesn't co cover your heartache. One of the main things about FireWise is because you can prevent a natural event from becoming a disaster. A natural event like a wildfire becomes a disaster when it takes over homes and takes people's lives. Firewise will help educate the community on smart living in the wildland urban interface. And Firewise will also connect homeowners with your emergency services community. This is a big deal. Once you know and they know you, they have a way around and we have personal rapport with them. It is easier for firefighters and emergency services personnel to come in and help you in your community when something does happen. Firewise is important because you don't want to come home and see something like this. I spent the night up on the mountain and was able to get to the house the next morning. And basically this is what I saw. That's my father-in-law's van that was parked there. We had uh, purchased it from him. What was behind that van was a house. And this is all that was left of it. Things are still smoking. As you can see in the pictures, that's my neighbor's vehicles. So our whole community suffered. Firewise is important because you don't want to come home to that. This is not something you want to see. What we have left is just of 18 years worth of life is in that pile right there inside the foundation and spread around the mountain a little bit. Firewise is important because the day after a wildfire, you want to come home to that. That's one of the buildings or houses and homes up on Hatcher Mountain just a couple of weeks ago. You want to come home for it to look. If you start looking in the woods just downhill from that house, you see what's there? There was a wildfire up on Hatcher Mountain. You see the fence? Kind of looks like the fence stopped that wildfire, didn't you? Actually, it's the green space that stopped the wildfire. It's pretty cool to see how it actually works. The fence is on the line between the woods and where the fire happened. And this was, one, was no tame fire. This was a pretty wild fire up there, pun intended. But all around that house, that's what the mountain looked like afterward. So that house survived. There was a few things that burned here and there, and the wind blew in. Luckily, this picture here, I just kind of threw in there to show people what a jackpot would look like when embers come in during a wildfire and hits one of those piles of wood, that's not going to be a surviving home. But this is. Concrete 
Green space, green space all around right there. Even the fire was out in the woods. It did not come close enough to damage any of this. These were spaced far enough for, away from the house and not mulched in heavily and uh, were able to survive. If you are using railroad ties to landscape, railroad ties are like torches with tar and pit in them that can burn. As a matter of fact, that wall right there was a railroad tie wall. When fire hits railroad ties, it can literally burn through the center of a railroad tie and pass fire to a building that it's butting up against and you'll have a big issue. So railroad ties are not a good idea to mulch with. Another home from up in the Hatcher Mountain fire, fire is all through here, fire up in the woods above it, but there was enough space and enough green space and dry space and most likely nothing on the house itself that could f catch fire that let that fire survive, that home survive. Another survivor from the Hatcher Mountain fire just a few weeks ago. Everything downhill here burned. This homeowner, about four or five weeks before the fire, cleared uh, a lot of the underbrush and uh, shrubs out. It allowed this house to just barely get touched by the fire. These lower poles right there, support poles, they actually got charred. But the fire was not hot enough to catch the rest on fire because they have a lot of extra space. Same home. Mulching is done not with flammable mulch, but rock. The bush caught on fire, but that bush by itself was not hot enough to actually catch the house on fire. It takes small tenders to catch siding and lumber on fire. Big pieces of lumber don't catch on fire very quickly. All this space on the side of the house is burned. But you see that right there? Pile of leaves. This is what we call a leaf eddy. Pure luck that the wind came from the other side of the house and blew the embers in the other direction and the fire in the other direction as it was traveling this way. These leaf eddies accumulate around your homes and they are very, very important signs to you. As you do regular maintenance around your home and you see leaf eddies or leaf piles around your home, mark those places in your mind or even in a map. In the case of a wildfire, you will most likely have an ember storm. Wind-blown embers will land in the same place where the leaf eddies land. Think about it. Leaves get blown in. Embers land on top of the leaves. The leaves can catch on fire very easily and then catch the house on fire. What you want to see after you have a wildfire It will happen, and it can happen again. It's just a matter of time. A lot of folks went to sleep after 2016. We got pretty, hit pretty hard, and the per people that got hit, they didn't really go to sleep, but people around them that were not directly affected did kind of go to sleep. And then it happened again in Hatcher Mountain. We learned a lot. The emergency services community learned a lot and the reason Hatcher Mountain didn't get any worse than it was is because of the lessons that were learned in 2016. You coming home, do you want to see this? Or do you want to see this? So it's up to you. You know about Firewise. You know what to do and join a firewise community, you will have the ability to help go back and see this when you come home instead of that.
being FireWise safe, knowing about FireWise and why FireWise is important is because you want to see this. Who needs to know? Homeowners need to know about FireWise. First and foremost, <coughs> it's the property owner's responsibility to make sure that they, their family, and their property stays, stays safe. We have emergency services personnel, but there are a lot more homeowners and just think about how long it would take a 911 call for you to get somebody there. Depending on where you live, it can be very fast or it can take some time. In case of a wildfire, it only takes seconds for a wildfire to move. Tenants need to know. So if you're the property owner and you have people living in your house, it would be a great idea to alert them to firewise principles and practices and what you're trying to do. Contractors. Contractors need to know. Contractors can build or rebuild in firewise manners and sometimes contractors will only do what you will have them to do. If you tell them to build on the cheap, they will build on the cheap. And honestly, Concrete siding is a little bit more expensive than regular wood siding, but my rebuilt home is built with concrete siding on the bottom floor where any of the fire could get to it close enough. Landscape companies. Landscape companies are very important. If they know and can advise you on firewise principle, how to mulch with fire-hardened materials, instead of pine needles or flammable mulch right up against the house, would be great. Rental guests. Oh, by the way, we live in a county that has a lot of rentals. Rentals kind of help our world go around here in this county. We do need to alert our folks that are visiting our county on what to do, where they are. The 2016 fire happened on Monday after Thanksgiving weekend. Sunday, the day before the wildfire, most guests left the county and went home. Can you imagine what would have happened if that wildfire would have happened a day before the Monday after Thanksgiving weekend when we literally had over 30,000 guests in this area. It was hard enough for those that trying to get out of Gatlinburg that night to get out of town, add another 30,000 people to that. It would have been a total disaster, much worse than it can be. So your guests really need to know. Vacation rental companies they tend to try to kind of put dangers out of sight, out of mind, but I would say they need to really reinforce making their guests know where they are and how to get out of there if they need to get out of there. Same thing goes for rental maintenance companies keeping up with firewise practices. The maintenance companies are really important because what happens with Mother Nature she continues to grow. She never stops growing. <coughs> Builders and contractors. I've got that in there a couple of three times because it is so important. Builders and contractors will only do what you ask them to do. You as the owner, you as the person that's going to live in your place, you need to know what you want. And building on the cheap or getting as inexpensive as possible is one way to look at it. But you also want safety. And you want to be able to make sure that your contractor and your builders are building what you desire. So it is up to you to ask for higher fire hardened siding instead of wood siding. It's up to you to make sure that they know what to do and how to build that firewise. And if they don't, 
It may be up to you to educate them and point them in the right direction. Permit agencies, we uh, hope that in the future it will be much, much safer to build fire-hardened houses and our permit agencies in the area actually take that into consideration when they make the new standards on how to build. Things are changing and I think it, a main part of that is make, laying down the standards and having them in such a way that it is saving lives. I'm going to tell you what FireWise is not. FireWise is not, and FireWise is. So what FireWise is, willingness is to prepare. Again, that comes from the homeowner, your willingness to prepare. It's the household maintenance, how you maintain your area around the house. The area around the house is the ignition zone. That means bushes, shrubs, mulching. Those can be ignition zones, things that start catching fire very easily. You want to create a defensible space. So in FireWise practices, basically the five feet, the first five feet around your house are the most important because if you can keep those five feet from burning, that means the flames won't directly go against your house. So you have a chance to survive. But what FireWise is mainly is peace of mind. I know it is for me. The way we've rebuilt, I have much, much easier time sleeping at night knowing that if something happens, it's not going to just catch on fire. Firewise is not any kind of regulations. It is all up to the homeowner of whether you want to do this or not. It's not fire department director. Nobody is going to tell you what to do. It doesn't mean you have to clear cut your landscape. It doesn't mean there are any regulations to FireWise. If you decide to ex accept FireWise principle, you're going to do it man uh, voluntary. It's not a regulation or mandatory. It won't be scientific reporting. It's not complete. Sorry to say there are a couple of places up on Hatcher Mountain that did burn, even though they used FireWise principle. So FireWise is not a guarantee that your home will survive. The main thing is about FireWise, you've got to do it before the smoke is in the air because once the smoke is, air, it is in the air, it's already too late to, re to prepare. You can't do anything then you, except hope that you have a go bag ready with all your important things that you can pack up with your pets and your family and get out of there. That's what happens when the smoke gets in the air and the wildfire gets close. You're not having a half time to sit there and try to make yourself firewise. So firewising means you have to do it all year round. As you do yet regular yard maintenance, you can do a little something every time. Owner's responsibility to prepare, to plan, to take action before fire ever happens and to stay vigilant, maintain. Mother Nature never stops growing. Keep it up all year round. Why is FireWise important? I've asked that question about a dozen times now. It's because using FireWise principles, you can be prepared. The big question is, what are you gonna do now that you know about FireWise. Like we said, the first five feet around the house are the most important. Also what's important is what's on the house. Think about yard furniture, if it's flammable or non-flammable, if there is a wildfire in the area or a threat of wildfire, can you put it away if it's flammable furniture where it won't be part of the tinder outside. We have the next area, 
about 30 feet of the house. And any outbuildings, you've got to consider those. Because if that catches on fire, that makes a big fire, and it could pass it to the little fire. All right, so fences, if there are wooden fences, the fence counts as part of the house. So as you notice, the area here, the five feet around, is outside that fence because the wooden fence can burn. You can still have all your trees. You can have your shrubs, your bushes. The basic principle is simple. Have small little bushes within the five foot area, probably nothing over a, f a foot tall. Then within the first 30 feet there, you can have larger bushes, but keep them spaced out. And then you can have your bigger trees in the 100 foot area. If you live on the mountain, like a lot of us do in this county, the steeper the hill, the faster fire can move up the hill. So you may want to expand your downhill area with keeping the bigger trees out. There's something called ladder fuel. If you have a small bush and then a small tree and a big tree and you've got vines growing up, Everything has leaves on it. The leaves are what's going to catch on fire first. So as that fire moves up, the ladder fuels from one little bush to the next one and up the vines to the top. What can happen is a ground fire that's easier to control will turn into a crown fire that's much harder to control. This is what I saw up on Chalet Village the night of the fire. Not only was the ground on fire, but the trees were on fire. So I literally was staring at a wall of fire that was moving through our neighborhood. So getting the small parts and the big parts of the trees, getting rid of that ladder fuel and limbing up the trees, cutting some of the lower branches out, can keep the fire from spreading from the ground into the crown. You can learn more about FireWise at the following links, nfpa.org, wildfire, or firewise.org, and then we have the disastersafety.org also. So now that you know about FireWise, it is up to you to share the message. You could be saving somebody's life.